We're coming up on the 50th anniversary of NASA's 1969 Apollo 11 lunar mission. In fact, as we record this, there are 72 days to the date, marking the anniversary of the launch of a Saturn V rocket that would carry two men, the first ever, to the surface of the moon. As we approach the June 16th launch and June 20th moon landing anniversaries, I've been seeing an uptick in information about Apollo and the Saturn V in the news and in the culture. Earlier this year, we had the beautiful documentary by Todd Douglas Miller uh, uh, entitled Apollo 11. He made that film with all historic footage, much of its large format film that's never been seen before. He did it with no narration or interviews. And so it's just the incredible assembly and soundscaping that was done. That film and the rest of the buzz has got me excited about Apollo 12. So I've taken out my Saturn V Lego kit. And as I've looked it over, I just want to share with you how incredible this kit is as maybe we walk through an Apollo mission. The Saturn V rocket was comprised of three primary stages. The first stage here uh, separates about right here with its five powerful F1 engines. The second stage, which had five smaller J2 engines. And the third stage with a single J2 engine. And this LEGO kit models all of that in incredible detail. We'll, we'll walk through a lot launch sequence together here. Uh, the rocket would fly and in just a couple minutes, the first stage will have expended its 500,000 gallons of fuel in just those couple minutes. And once that was done, it would fall away back to Earth. And then the second stage would insert, uh, insert us into orbit. But before that happened, the launch tower here would actually leave. That was just for an emergency escape of the astronauts. And it would pull with it this simulated cover, which actually covered the capsule. So it would boost away. And this, of course, was the capsule was still attached to the service module. And so we'll put this on now that we're at that point. Uh, once the second stage was expended, that would fall away to Earth. And then the third stage would actually send us to the moon. And on the way to the moon, the astronauts would then separate their command module from the end and the fairings would separate and break away. The astronauts would then turn around and come back and dock with the LEM and then break it away. And finally, they'd get rid of the third stage would actually go on to fly beyond the moon. And that was expendable. This is what the astronauts took to the moon. Once the astronauts were finally in orbit around the moon, Michael Collins stayed in the command module while Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin separated from the craft and headed for the surface of the moon. Once they've landed and conducted their mission, only the ascent module uh, took off and came back to rejoin for the return to Earth. And in the end, it was just the capsule that returned to Earth with its heat shield protecting the astronauts on re-entry until they splashed down into the ocean where they inflated their buoys and flotation ring and waited for Navy frogmen to come and recover them in the capsule. I just love this Lego kit. It is so delightful in the way that it just reveals all the functional detail of the Saturn V. And it's so much fun to just reenact the whole Apollo mission. The one thing it doesn't do though is fly like this rocket does right here. This is of course the Liberty Bell 7 on a Mercury Redstone rocket. Uh, this is the rocket that took Gus Grissom into space on the Mercury 4 mission on the second manned American space flight. You know, we're filming this on May 5th and that's the exact date that a Mercury Redstone just like this on the Mercury 3 mission took Alan Shepard into space on the Freedom 7 rocket. And that was just 59 years ago the day that he became the first American in space. Now a flying model rocket like this one is just loaded with a model rocket engine and it will 
produce its thrust for a few seconds. They're all designated how many seconds of thrust will be produced before it will create an ejection charge that will separate the model into a couple different sections uh, so it can parachute back to Earth. Sometimes the parts will parachute down separately. This one is designed to come down on a single parachute. And this one also happens to come apart right where the real capsule would detach from the rocket. Um, not all model rockets are like that. Sometimes they just break apart at a random uh, place that better serves the purpose of flying the model rocket. You know, it's hard to imagine anything that was more influential on me as a young creative than the height of the space race, other than the original Star Wars movies. But the space race just demonstrated both nonlinear problem solving, you know, uh, highlighted by the Apollo 13 mission, but also the intuitive mind and resolute determination. Maybe best personified in, in Kennedy's exhortation to go to the moon, but even better exemplified by Werner von Braun and his determination to reveal to us all the ideas he had about rocketry and space flight and what it could mean for all humanity. Now, these are the kind of ideas I have buzzing around in my head. And that and the excitement of the 50th anniversary had me thinking, wouldn't it be fun to fly a Saturn V rocket on the anniversary? And the answer for me was yes. So we contacted our friends at Apogee Components in Colorado Springs and required about their giant Saturn V flying model rocket. And it was out of stock. So we got on a waiting list and we didn't have to wait long. It's here and we're gonna take a look at it right now. This is the biggest box I've ever gotten when I've ordered a model rocket kit, even from Apogee. And I just wanna dig in here and kind of see what we're getting into. I think we're going to be burning some midnight oil here to find all the time required to put this thing together. This rocket kit is advertised as a skill level five kit, but I don't think it's going to be, that's, that's five steps up from beginner, but I don't think it's going to be too hard for us to put it together. Um, the folks at Apogee have done such an incredible job taking the mystery out of assembling a kit like this. And that's not always the case in the scrappy world of model rocketry, let me tell you. But, wow, fantastic bits here. Here's our capsule. This is a 170th scale model rocket kit. It's going to be 62 inches when complete. Just over 62 inches. That's right at eye level for me. So, this thing is enormous. Here we've got some nice vacuform plastic parts. It's got the, the engine covers. Beautiful decal sheet. Thick. One of the things I love about this this kit are the varying levels of detail as we go up on the stages of the rocket. We've got these beautiful vacuform plastic wraps putting some of the detail into the first and second stage. Um, so detailed in fact that one of these kits is assembled and on display at the Boeing Museum of Flight. It's museum grade kit here and uh, we hope we'll do this one justice and reach that level of excellence. But there's so many wraps here. And as you go up to the smaller and smaller stages, they've used a couple different techniques to get that detail into place. This is an embossed sheet of cardboard for one of the upper transitions that is the next level of detail down from vacuum. And finally, as we get up to the command service module, we have a raised ink print. And I think even though this gets painted white, the raised ink brings out some of the detail in that final segment. 
Looks like we've got some rings that'll probably become interior parts of this rocket, but when I see one, I can't help but think of the guidance ring on the Saturn V that IBM built that had all the gyros and flight computers in it. I don't think that's that, that for it. So we've got the F1 engines here. Now they don't actually fly up on the model. Um, therefore, a, a decorative base that we can install when we want to display the rocket. They stay here with us on Earth. We've got our G impulse engine right here. This should take this rocket up to over 400 feet in flight. It's a powerful engine. We'll go into a little detail about how these things are rated and what G impulse even means. We've got some instructions here. I got to call 1995. I need a DVD player. Um, but these are all on YouTube and I've already watched them all already several times. This is what I go to sleep to now, hearing the voice of Tim in my head uh, with these instructions. This thing's incredible. You know, it's in fact the largest Saturn V kit that you can fly without having to obtain a special waiver. I can't wait to dig into it. Uh, next time we get together, I'm gonna show you some of the tools that I use for modeling and some of the expendables that are required uh, to get this thing. See you then.